So George A.K. joins us now. He's a legal practitioner and an analyst. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you so much. Well, interesting scenario uh, out there. Different strokes, really, they say for different folks. But uh, let's take a look at the entire scenario now. First, it was announced. And by the way, have you heard people talk about uh, how they accept or reject this? What's your perspective? Well, if you're asking me my perspective, I will go ahead and tell you that. But if you're asking me what people say, oh, then that's tell us for about you. about the feel you get out there first. Uh, the feel I get from there is that um, it, it, uh, the tension has come down. Tension has come down. People prayed for this. As a matter of fact, uh, one will say uh, it was good we had that strike. It, it calls for a national rebirth. Indeed, it is like trying to rewrite the social contract between the people and the government. Is that the feelers or your perspective? This is my, this is my feeling. Okay. okay. Yeah, because you see, if I, I'm not in a position to begin to gather all kinds of feelings because some people are feeling, no, we should have done maybe another week of strike. You know, I don't know what reasons they have. Uh, there are quite a number of people who say, look, we should have even ended it before now. Maybe people who are talking from the side of the daily paid people, you know, there are quite a number of Nigerians who live on a daily basis. They are different from pr the bulk of the labor group. That's the, the labor. I mean, by next week, they should be collecting their salary, whether or not they had, they had a strike. I mean, it's, it doesn't make any meaning. But there are people who wake up in the morning and they depend. They come out with their shovel, maybe they are not, they're artisans or something, and the, the fact that there will be breakfast on the table depends on if they are engaged that particular day. They have lost a lot, and to that extent, they are happy that it ended. But you see, on a general note, like I said, I think it was necessary that we had that conflict. And like they will say in sociology, uh, conflict resolution will bring a better society, as it were. It's like thesis, synthesis. Then it, 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 then you not get, it, it, it's like it's, uh, what, what you call thesis, antithesis. Then you synthesis. get a synthesis. Okay. And from there, society continues to develop. If we didn't go on strike, probably Nigerians, half of Nigerians are not petroleum economists. Everybody is now an accountant. Everybody has an idea of how much PMS you can get from, you know, one barrel of oil and all of that, you know. That is not to say, however, that Nigerians were docile before this time. But you see, the, the enlightenment, the critical consciousness and the awareness came to the fore with this. But you see, it serves as a very big lesson to the government in the sense that people are now bothered about what happens in government. Before this time, government was run in an opaque manner. You hardly can see what is <coughs> happening behind the wall, as it were. People are going out of their ways now to get information from government. And I just hope the, the part of the gains of this strike is that they will take this critical awareness to the states as against hanging it at the federal level. Yeah, because that. the governors have always had a runaway kind of leadership. Perhaps you tell us more on that. Yes, in the sense that nobody bothers about what allocation you get, because take it or leave it, most of the governors just depend on, sta on statutory allocation. At the end of the month, I mean, they send their accountants or their commissioners of finance to, to uh, Abuja to go grab state allocation. That's why they are not, no longer looking inwards to generate in, uh, income, or I mean, looking at their entirely generated revenue. But nobody bothers about what is allocated to what. Or like what we have found out now, Every, everybody in the street now knows that this, the, 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 the president gave himself one billion for food, and he's like, "How can you give me eighteen million, I mean eighteen thousand as my minimum wage, and you walk away with one billion and all of that?" That puts a question mark. That kind of awareness begins to go. But in the, uh, with, the, with, with the governors, apart from probably Governor Rochas that came out and said, look, this security vote, I do not know what I'm securing in it, and he slashes it, puts it into education, and puts it into quite a number of other things. And other. Before then, nobody knew that the governors were walking away with the upwards of five, six billion for security and all of that. So, in other words, part of the gains of this strike is that it has raised a significant level of critical consciousness with the government, you know, yeah, and sorry. that we needed it. All right, go ahead. 
I was going to say that, uh, is this because, because you know, you, you're very optimistic that this, the people are beginning to ask more questions, but isn't this more because this particular action of government <coughs> was going to touch directly on the people's pockets? Isn't that the reason why? Do you think that if, say, government had taken any other decision, maybe in the long run could affect them, but it wasn't touching on the uh, on the economics of it all or touching on the on the pocket of the common man would we have come out the same way we did no you see the events that change history hang on tiny chances if for instance the the the, the president did not remove fair subsidy in a fair, in a in one first work maybe we wouldn't have gotten people on the streets i mean would have continued to go about our normal duties and all that but if you, if you and i do know now that the thing had gone beyond 65 naira People are now bothered about, indeed, part of the litany of demands that made both by labor, civil society, and even the general people, is that, look, the cost of governance must reduce. Before this time, like last year, we were all talking about uh, uh, jumbo salaries, and it was like a newspaper topic, jumbo salaries. Now, it is critical in the sense that it can also send people to the streets again. Over and above what happened, you know, last year, I mean, last week, you you still find out that that is that it will come for some level of introspection. That introspection is that we have been accusing government of not leading us well. People are also asking, what of the lead? Like one of the analysis people made while this track was going on is that yes, we keep saying that uh, the government is paying subsidy, but Jonathan is not the person who climbs on a mother vessel to go and dip into the mother vessel to find out the quantity and quality of the PMS that was imported. It takes somebody who probably is the staff of DPR or NMPC to declare that a 30 metric tons of, of uh, PMS found in a mother vessel is indeed, uh, I mean 10,000 metric tons is indeed 30, uh, 30 metric tons and pays for 30 tons, 30 metric tons as against 10,000 10, metric tons. That is his so. It's not Jonathan that does that, but it is the same DPR person, the same labor, I mean, that is, this, is, the, is in labor, that is on the street, saying government has paid subsidy. Meanwhile, he was the person who approved it. Okay, okay, there's the, the analysis I was also looking at. Before you can bring, bring in uh, PMS, you have to have what they call NAVA clearance. You have to have what they call SS clearance. You have to have DPR clearance. In, in all of this, there are, I think about eight clearances you have to get. And these are supposed to be checked. And indeed, that is part of why I'm beginning to agree partially with those who say there was no subsidy. Because this is what blows up the pump price, the landing cost of it. Is these eight, ch eight columns I told you about. Nava clearance, SS clearance, DPR clearance, NMPC, and NIMASA, and all of that. And by the time, when you, when in Nigeria, when you talk about clearance, you know what I'm talking about. By the time you finish that clearance, of course it jacks up the fuel price. And when you now go for, when, I mean, the, the, the pump price now goes up to the 140 something they are talking about. Meanwhile, if these were not there, you probably would have gotten the, 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 the fuel pump price at less than 100. So, in other words, what appears to be the difference is some kind of subsidizing corruption. You would have seen the, the eight items or the eight columns that these monies go to. In which case, if they were not there, fuel would probably well, come. I, I remember. So, in other words, what I'm saying is that it's the same level. That is on the streets that collected all of this subsidy as uh, it uh, by I, way I, of their staff being the approval talking, authorities. Are you talking about the civil service or which? Yeah, sure. Civil service is part of labor. Have you noticed that the civil servants are the, the, about the richest people in Nigeria now? There's no business you do that you can make as much money as you make in civil service. They are what contrast to themselves. If they say there's a low, a low housing scheme, you find out that, that one director or one permanent secretary will buy about 24 of it. He doesn't need to live there. He wouldn't even live there. He would just buy it off and deny the poor. So in other words, what I'm talking about is the level of introspection that we should also introduce. As against looking at government has done this to us and government has done this to us, there are quite a number of things we have also inflicted on our persons. For instance, you notice that people bought fuel on the 31st of January for 65 Naira. Mm -hmm. The same fuel, the nothing happened to 31st of December. The, oh, sorry, the 31st of uh, December, December for, for 65 Naira. Yeah. The following day, they went to the, 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 the pumps, the, I mean the fuel stations, and the, the price increased to 140. 
The same fuel that has already been subsidized and paid for now got sold to Nigerians by profiteers in Nigeria, Nigerians themselves, to Nigeria uh, for 140. In other words, having collective subsidy, they still pay, they, they still have to, uh, to, to hike the price to 140. I like, I, 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 I like us to look at uh, one of this uh, issue you just raised here, which is very, very key wow. here in looking at the gains that you just talked about, about uh, eight or so uh, monitors uh, that go through all of this as at uh, the time they come into the uh, country. Uh, SS clearance, NAVDA clearance, <coughs> NIMAS, and all of that. Now, once upon a time, no one knew that all of these existed except you're in that particular business. Now that we know, and everyone claims to talk about uh, uh, ignorance or claim some kind of ignorance as to the whereabout or where these monies go into. What should we be doing at this point in time? That means if we have to open the books, it's just not under the books of a particular agency. It's almost a, a whole lot of books that should be opened. Oh, sure. You see, when government acts at times, you know, we also should give them we, we, should, we should allow them some decisions that probably we do not have proper information. You notice when Okonji Wala came in and said all the all those agencies at the port should all leave because she didn't see what they were doing not only did she not see what they were doing she knew what they were doing and she she asked them to leave the people now went and started lobbying the national assembly you notice that that raised a lot of dust that no that they should be said uh, they, they can only come on need basis the reason is that that slows down that that brings the bureaucracy in clearing your goods in the same, the, the same scenario I painted with bringing in PMS is exactly what happens in, 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 at the wharf. That was why she said those enforcement, I think there's a, a particular unit of custom, they called Federal Enforcement Unit or so, Federal, federal Enforcement Unit or something. I think that's, that's, their, their, that's their name. He asked them to leave. What is the reason? Is that the same Federal Enforcement Group that will clear your, for, I mean, the same custom that will clear your goods at the, at the, at the port will get information will pass information to this particular unit and of course they will go and impound it on the road and say you either did not pay enough duty or that one or two things went wrong and they will so when we talk about impounding they will seize it entirely and you now see some other person who is related to the custom general uh controller general clutching in an allocation paper for the cost of for two or three containers that you imported maybe you would have mortgaged your house to do that and that brings your whole business down chain of corruption. In other words, I have moved this corruption away from government to civil servants, to, uh, to, to those who are in agencies of government. Because the much people can say is that, ah, why doesn't uh, Jonathan sack the director general, I mean the controller general of custom? He will sack everybody. And they said, no, quite a number of these PMS pass through our, our borders, and it's government agencies that are also uh, guarding the borders. See, what does he do? He sacks everybody in a immigration custom and goes to an NPC, sacks everybody in, in, in an NPC, goes to DP and sacks everybody in a uh, DP. Uh, since, we know, since we know that's not possible, what should we do? Good. The whole idea now is that the, uh, the EFCC and all other fraud monitoring agencies should be alert now. If it is that it's now that their job has started. Because the reason is that the people now know that half of what should go to get to them does not get to them. Indeed, somebody was analyzing, we'll, we'll go back to government now, analyzing the budget, of course, and said that they are going to buy kitchen equipment for the vice president's kitchen or something. I think is that, a, that is allocated to either the, the presidency or the, uh, the vice president's kitchen. I think about 420 something million. And he said, what kind of pot would the president, would, the vice president, would be, or would they be cooking with at the presidency? Even if it is what it was a twenty-four carat gold pot, or kind of spoons that are capable of detecting poison and all of that, that it will not cost this much. And of course, because of the level of enlightenment of Nigerians, but a number of people went on the internet and they were looking for prices of pots around the world, Europe and America, to find that the the, the most costly pots you can find around the world, and that they couldn't cost that much. What, the, what impression does that give them? That there must be some kind of fraud that is involved in this budget. And if you ask me, I will call, I will call on the president to record that budget. Which one? The, oh, the one that he's just... Especially the one that has to do with his food. Um, um, in short, I think the gas bill was about 200 and something million. In other words, 
on a daily basis. Mr. Ike, sorry, who puts all those figures? Gas. Sorry a minute. Yes. Who puts those figures? Is, is, is it the president himself or is it some kind of uh, officer that was given the responsibility to put all of that figure? And does he go through all of that? He probably will not go through all of that because the figures are too many. It, it, it is quite bulky for him to go through. But the moment he submits it, he becomes, he takes responsibility. The moment he bows at the National Assembly and drops it, it becomes his document. Yeah, so, so, in other words, what I was saying is the figures are not only outrageous, they are embarrassing. Uh, uh, so, uh, that's the only way you can get close to people. Because we have been talking about the gap between the governed and the, and, 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 and the, uh, and, and the rulers, as it were, or at least the leaders. It, it goes, the chasm becomes wider. If, for instance, the lifestyle of the people who are governing us is so outrageous that we cannot even come close to it. It has to reflect the mood of the nation. You cannot, of course, you have just made an, 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 an example with, you give, you approve 18,000 minimum wage for a family. That is a particular family that is only the father that works. Everybody waits until the man brings back this 18,000. In the same country, his leader has 1 billion for his own kitchen. It doesn't add up. So it's an but, image thing. Can we actually measure the amount of uh, awakening or consciousness this has raised in the mindset of Nigeria and Nigeria? Because now they talk about the economics, they talk about governance, they talk about civil society, they talk about a whole lot of things such that so many questions on their lips also. Now we uh, have 97 Naira per liter, I have the fuel prices, I mean the pump prices, the PPP IRA responsibility, have they reverted? What would be government's next action? This uh, palliatives, as they put it, how long would it take them to put it? What happens in March? Can we actually measure all of this and say, look, well, if government responds the way they seem to be going about it, the way they've itemized issues, how will people then react when maybe in March government comes up? Perhaps with the second leg of all of this. Or are we just glossing over it? No, no, no. You, you notice that this strike action ended abruptly. I use that word advisedly in the sense that a number of people would have thought that it was going to go beyond that. And by the time the president came, made his, made his speech, everybody was like confused. Is it the president that is supposed to call off the strike? A few hours after, that is about 2 o'clock or thereabouts, the labor now came. But see, the underlying thing was the security of the nation was at stake. And labor appreciated that. The security of the nation was at stake because the strike was about to be hijacked by hoodlums and all kinds of people that don't mean well for Nigeria. For some reason, labor appreciated it and backed down. Because first and foremost, there must be a country before we can, we can we are able to buy fuel at either 65 or 144. Because if there is, there, is, there is chaos in this country, I mean, all of us will probably start yeah. looking for but a way of going to Koto, are, and they will close their border against us. But does that address the issues? Because nobody wants Nigerian refugees. Yeah, but does it address the issues? Because if he ended abruptly and used the word advisedly, yes. could it also be that perhaps people that, that, still have... That's the point I'm making. The, because it ended this abruptly, everybody is now on the lookout with regard to these palliatives we are talking about we agreed on that we are promised us when are they coming how are they coming in what quantum what is the quantum of these palliatives how, how are they going to impact on us such that we can now begin to do a reality check say in the next four or five months this is what we the government said they were going to do and we have not found anything and of course government is on its toes Take it or leave it. Government is on its toes. Because it has never been like this before. It has never been like this. It got to a level where even when Labour said, look, we have called up this, the, the mass rallies, the street uh, protests and all of that, but stay at home. Nigerians simply locked their doors and stayed at home. On Monday, nobody, you couldn't see a foul on the street. On the street. It was that effective. So it is a warning signal to government it is also a warning signal to other members of, I mean, what we keep talking about the executive. Forget, don't forget that the, the, the legislator is also part of government. And even though the legislator tried to see if they can launder their image. Do they see via, themselves via, as part no, of government? No, 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 via the, the House of Representatives by looking like they are on the side of the people. Nigerians also are not deceived. Because those are the people who have 
all, all, all the legends of office, as it were. These are people who, who have convoys that are unimaginable in a place where somebody does not even have a bicycle. So it's not as if they have escaped the, eye, the, the fine eyes of the people. We, the, the people are also looking at them. So the executive is being looked at. The legislator is also being looked at. And if you can extrapolate, everybody is thinking that if for any reason the, the, the presidency has all of these figures that are approved for them, that the approval authority, which is of course the National Assembly, should also be able to take half of it. So even if we have not seen the, 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 the domestic bill or kitchen bill of uh, the senior president, for instance, some people will begin to imagine that, okay, he should also take up to about half a billion <laughs> for him to approve you know, a billion. Because it goes without saying that he cannot approve a billion for the, the president's domestic bill and walk away. It's interesting uh, you brought that. You know, you said you, you suggested that the president withdraw that particular budget, you know, if only to look at what, you know, say, Aso Rock alone consumes from that budget and maybe trim it down. But you don't think that the National Assembly might be able to fill in that role of looking at it and maybe looking at themselves as well? The second point I made is why the National Assembly may be incapable of doing it. Because while trying to approve that, they'll be able to approve a few things for themselves. So it takes us civil society, labor, to be able to say this should not be approved, in the, should not even be submitted in the first instance, not to talk of being approved. Because if for any reason somebody approves a billion, he should be able to at least approve a quarter of a billion for himself. Mm. <laughs> well, well, this, this logic, this logic, no, I think, it's, how can it's, we prove this logic? It's a, it's a how, can, how can we prove it wrong now? Do, what should the National Assembly do in this? Uh, sorry, Chamberlain. Now that we've seen the executive arm say, look, we're about to cut 25%, uh, sh shouldn't we also be looking towards the National Assembly to also do some kind of sacrifice? And you see, it is also important that the president be advised, because in, in any case, we have found out that we have a listening president. If if is that is that another game? You're, you're sure, of course. I mean, he listened. To, I'm, I'm sure he must have listened to all the discussions in quite a number of the print and uh, and uh, uh, electronic media for him to be able to go back and from I mean, or from the one 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 forty one uh, naira uh, uh, which he had in mind, which he worked with all the all the numbers that he used for his palliatives and all of that. He need, he needed to cut it down, and he did right. He also had to. Uh, 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 get AFCC to go after the the, the subsidy ca yeah, scam. But did AFCC have to wait for that? Well, uh, they they didn't need to wait, but you see. Uh, so it then means that the AFCC is not, is not independent. No, 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 no it's, it's, it will, it will not go there. Uh, but but but, but <laughs> no, I can but tell you, public <laughs> outcry also can influence the decisions of agencies in government. No, but the gov people have been crying out about this previously. So why did the commission have to wait for this kind of headlines you see now, swooping on PPPRA and NPC over subsidy payments? They could have done this a long time ago. I told you that events that change history hang on tiny chances. Mm. If we didn't go to the streets, probably this wouldn't have happened. Do you think government can reinvent itself in the light of them being on their toes in terms of achieving what they've set out to do? No, no, they don't have a choice. Oh no, they don't have a choice in, in, the, in the, 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 the way the circumstances are today. They don't have a choice. But you see, the, the much I can also say is that government should go beyond this 25% basic salary. Everybody's basic salary is about the lowest thing you can have. So we are not deceived. The, basic, the allowances are where the issues are, not the basic salary. People donate their salary. I mean, as a politician, the first thing I wanted to do was to donate my salary. Mm. It's, it means nothing to you. That's Maybe the you know, you know, of votes. So, that. salary of a politician is like pure water. No it's like, it's, oh, it's yeah. worth nothing. The, the packs of office are what makes the politician. Mm. So, in other words, it is the, the look at the allowances. All these jumbo allowances with regard to well, your, their dogs, their servants, their drivers, their, how many drivers they have, and all of that. By the time you wait through all of those, that, that, you now begin to give paint a picture of a government that is running on a lean pulse. So that when you, when the president says, "I feel your pain," you know he's feeling it, not that he's imagining it.